Despite the early hour, hundreds of people were already gathered on the lawn and steps outside the Supreme Court, on the first day of what newspapers were calling the Poison Trial. Many had been there since the previous night, hoping to get a seat in the public gallery. On Pritchard and von Brandes streets, spectators hung out of the windows, waiting to get a view of the Black Maria when it arrived, with the accused Daisy de Malka. Around the world, in London, Shanghai, New York, newspapers ran stories about the upcoming trial. In Vanity Fair, Daisy was compared to the American murderer, Winnie Ruth Judd, although the cases had nothing in common other than sensation. One year earlier, Judd had killed two friends, Agnes Ann Leroy and Hedvig Samuelson, and dismembered one of them before transporting both bodies in a trunk and suitcases by train from Phoenix to Los Angeles. When she was apprehended at Central Station, it was because of the stench coming from her luggage. Harry Morris arrived in court an hour before the hearing began, as was his custom. At the end of a long table stood Cyril Jarvis, his height suddenly accentuating the differences between him and Harry Morris. The one was tall, handsome, a good dresser, thoughtful, a road scholar, the other short, bespectacled, pugnacious, slightly dishevelled, with no aspirations to being an intellectual. But Jarvis wasn't fooled. The chief prosecutor, like Harry's other opponents, had repeatedly seen him cast a spell over witnesses, jurymen, the public gallery, even the judge, until, imperceptibly, the mood in court changed, and a watertight case sprang a leak. And someone who had obviously been guilty even of murder was suddenly discharged with a slap on the wrist. Jarvis had also received some especially worrying news. William Sprout, one of his key witnesses, the reason they were here today, the man who had started the whole investigation against Daisy, was seriously ill with double pneumonia, and it was unlikely that he would be able to testify. Behind Jarvis, the public gallery was already packed, while another 200 people waited in the vestibule outside for a chance to get in, mostly with fashionably dressed women. Next to the jury box stood a sergeant of the court, making sure that it stayed empty, except for special guests. At one point, two well-dressed women in their early forties came through a side entrance. Both of them motioned a greeting to Harry Morris and Jarvis, and took their seats in the jury box as spectators, the only way a woman would be allowed into it. They were the judge's wife, Jenny Greenberg, and her friend, Sarah Gertrude Millen. Daisy was ushered in, dressed in a black suit with a lace front, the outfit she had worn for the funeral of Rhodes, and a beret, which she took off. She was holding a 